So ladies and gentlemen, our good friend of the channel, Andrew Lippert, always gives us good suggestions on Major League Baseball players he feels need to be profiled. Now, over the next two podcasts, we're going to be uh, taking care of two of Andrew's uh, requests, both San Francisco uh, Giants players in Major League Baseball. One, Tim Lincecum, who basically just wrapped up his career in the, in the last short while, uh, despite uh, injuries and other things, had a very good career. But the first one we're talking about is off the field peccadillos kind of diminished what he did on the field. At one point in the mid-1970s, like uh, Mark Fidrich, he's one of the best young players in Major League Baseball. An ALL, AL Rookie of the Year, he was uh, an All-Star in 1976, and threw a no-hitter to much of the light of the Giants fans. So today, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be talking about the man they called the Count, John Joseph Montefusco, or better known as John Montefusco. Now, he's a right-handed pitcher who uh, threw in the MLB from 74 to 86, most notably as a member of the Giants, again, which he won the NL Rookie of the Year uh, and pitched a no-hitter. He also played for the Braves, the Padres, and wrapped up his career with the Yankees in uh, some injury plague campaigns at the end of his uh, uh, a career in Major League Baseball. Now, born in Long Beach, New Jersey, he attended the Great Middleton High, High School. Named the NL's Rookie of the Year in 75, Montefusco's known nickname was Account, a pun on his last name, which sounds like Monte Cristo. In his 13-year career, uh, the, the statistics don't back up how good he was. He ended up 983 with uh, almost 1,100 strikeouts and a 3.54 ERA. Again, he was an NL All-Star in 76, winning a career high 16 games that year. Now, he burst on the scene in 1974 with a very solid 3-2 record in five starts over seven games. Now, 75, his big breakthrough year, 15-9 with a 2.88 average, with 10 complete games and four shutouts. Now, that year he pitched 243 innings with 215 strikeouts, so he's putting dynamite numbers. Now 76, that was his big all-star selection, 16 and 14 with a 2.84 with six shutouts and 11 complete games, 253 innings pitch, 172 strikeouts. Now uh, uh, innings pitch to shutout ratio was quite strong. Now 77 was a little deception. He only played 26 games, but got back to the 10-game uh, uh, win uh, win column in 78 with an 11-9 record with a solid 36 starts. Now, injuries were plaguing his career. He shifted teams quite often. He went from San Francisco to Atlanta. He tried him in the bullpen a little bit in 81, then over to San Diego in uh, in uh, 82 and got his uh, starting uh, career back 10-11 record in 32 starts now 83 split time between San Diego and uh, the Yankees with a solid 14-4 record he went 5-0 and with the Yankees that year but uh, again hip injuries really plagued him in his last campaigns with New York and even though he signed a multi-year contract for more than two million dollars in the middle of the 1980s, he couldn't uh, balance off the injuries with his uh, production. Now, uh, he entered his first major league game as a relief pitcher as a call-up in September 3rd, 74. Not only was he a winner booting pitcher that day, he also hit a home run in his first major league at bat. Now, at the time, and still is, there's no designated hitter in the National League. He had a, a good uh, a good swing at the plate, and again, it was a tape measure shot. We all remember that. Now, he's only one of a handful of pitchers in Major League Baseball history to do that in his first game. And he is one of only two players to both hit home run his first at bat and eventually win the Rookie of the Year award. The other, of course, is Wally Moon. Now, before a game against LA Dodgers, on July 4, 75, Montefusco guaranteed he would win the game. He proceeded to throw a shutout as the Giants defeated the Dodgers 1-0. Now, the 1976 season, again, was his peak his career. On September 29th of that year, he threw a no-hitter for the Giants and a big 9-0 triumph over the Braves. It was the last no-hitter to be thrown by a Giant until Johnson Sanchez threw one on July 10th 
2009. Now, all his efforts with the Giants eventually led to the Giants' Wall of Fame. But like I said, after the 83 season, Montefusco's uh, big contract with the Yankees, uh, we felt that a lot of people, uh, he could have probably helped the Yankees get back in the playoffs. Again, uh, but the injuries really hampered him. He started the season 86 in the bullpen, but pitching only four games before recurrent hip pain became too severe to pitch through. And on September 28th of that year, he retired. Now, off the field, there was all kind of rumors that some things weren't really going well in his personal life, and this is what occurred, ladies and gentlemen. In October 1997, he was arrested and charged with beating his former wife of 22 years, Doris, who had, re had re recently divorced in her Colts Neck, New Jersey home. He was eventually held on $60,000 bail and was charged with aggravated sexual assault, making terroristic threats, assault, burglary, and criminal mischief. Montefusco was indicted in December 97 and was held on $1 million bail. Now, he was eventually released on bail in November 99 after serving more than two years behind bars. And in February 2000, he was acquitted of the most serious charges and found guilty of criminal trespass and simple assault and was sentenced to three years probation. Now, in 2001, a U.S. District Judge in Trenton also dismissed the lawsuit filed by Bonifusco against ESPN. Judge Anna Elise Thompson ruled that being compared to O.J. Simpson is not defamation because during a March 19, 2000 broadcast on ESPN's Sports Center 2000, Doris had likened her husband to O.J., who was also acquitted in the 95 murder of his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson. An ESPN announcer during the broadcast had paraphrased Bonifusco's ex-wife as saying, the only difference between this and the OJ case is that she's alive to talk about to Talk about it. Nicole Simpson is not. Now, at the time of his arrest, he had been a pitching instructor for the Tampa Yankees, a minor league team. He later spent several years as the pitching coach for the Somerset Patriots in the Independent Atlantic League of Professional Baseball until resigning in September 2005. Now, what really stands out for me with the count is when he would play against games against the AL East, including my Montreal Expos, uh, uh, multiple pitchers, moving fastball, uh, great release, uh, great extension, and he could easily won 20 games, but the, the, the Giants at the time, ladies and gentlemen, were not like as talented as the Expos, the Pirates, the Phillies, uh, you know, uh, the Dodgers. He was winning 15 games on a team that was only capable of winning 75 games. With better run support, he easily could have been uh, a 20-game winner. And when he arrived in New York again, a lot of people felt he was the last piece that the Yankees needed to get back to the World Series because after the debacle in 81. But in 83... Uh, Situation: uh, Yankees and Steinbrenner brought in a lot of free agents. I think uh, I think there was like five or six that were going on, and Don Mangley was starting to uh, again uh, arrive as a key player for the Yankees soon after that. But that's the lost teams of the Yankees in the 1980s, the mid 1980s, because again they had the talent, and because of injury or because of bad luck or whatever, they really didn't uh, get uh, what they paid for. But for me, again, I uh, I recognize he's he wasn't the nicest guy at the time off the field, but on the field I I was very impressed because a lot of people felt that the Expos were going to try to get him in the 1980s, but uh, it didn't pan out. There was rumors because Montreal was spending some money on free agents, and this was the time when Ross Grimsley had left. Bill Lee was being sent to the bullpen, and there was some talk there might be a trade for about a few school, but it, it didn't pan out. So, ladies and gentlemen, Andrew, thanks a lot for the requests. If you like what we're doing here, we're a vintage MLB uh, podcast, so let us know what to like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any, uh, if you're a San Francisco fan, any thoughts on your favorite moment with the count, let me know. And don't forget, uh, on the field is much different than off the field. Some people are pricks on the field and good people off it, and some people are pricks off the field. Like I said, he had issues, and uh, we're only judging uh, him for his playing days, not for what he did off the field, because, you know, uh, I'm not an expert to know what was going on in his life that caused him and his wife to break up in that incident. It's not for me to say. I'm not going to judge, because I don't have enough details. I never covered him directly, 
because he was retired by the time I became a sports reporter. I only remember him being a talented player who really knew how to throw the ball. Thanks for listening.